Hi, this is Dr. Rex Lee, and I appreciate you joining me today. I'm going to be discussing flowchart programming of field programmable gate arrays, silicon software's visual applets, which is sold by my company, Pyramid Imaging, uh, really has me excited. Uh, this gives you the capability of programming an FPGA with image processing algorithms without being an expert in VHDL hardware description languages that are previously required to be able to adequately uh, program an FPGA. Now anybody, including myself, am able to implement high-level image processing routines for real-time image processing uh, through an FPGA without any prior experience. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look and see what this visual applets is all about. I'm going to go ahead and launch this and you're going to see a um, window pop up that's got a uh, set of menus at the top that are fairly intuitive. Uh, we've got a project uh, workspace here and on the right are a couple of windows. One shows us project information. The other one is a whole set of different types of uh, image processing routines that are icon uh, encapsulated. I can drag and drop them into my workspace and create a project. I'm going to go ahead and just load one that I've already done. Uh, here's an example of a whole range of, ex uh, of different types of examples that have been given to us by Silicon Software. This is really fantastic way for you to get a head start on utilizing um, this set of uh, software. I'm going to go into the motion detection and load that into my project. And so here you see uh, this flowchart that's been created. I can move things around in a very intuitive way. Uh, you'll notice that it's already been it, it's been set up to implement a monochrome camera to feed high bandwidth images into a buffer and then all of this manipulation is going to happen and for the purpose here of detecting motion. Okay, well, I don't have a camera hooked up to my computer right now, but I can exercise images that are on my computer. So I'm going to bring in a source module, and then I'm going to go ahead and load a bunch of images that I've already saved. So here's quite a few that have been saved on my on my computer. These are images uh, of, of from a video clip off of a cell phone camera uh, that I acquired of buzzards flying around on a bank. Uh, so this was uh, a particular application right now that is uh, of, of high interest in the security community, which would be to detect and identify drone swarms that might be coming around high asset facilities. Okay, so you'll notice I brought all these images down here and I can actually walk through them. Oh, well, my window is uh, somewhat zoomed in. As you can see, I can scroll and I can see that. And I can click up here and I can literally see the whole window. So once again, I can walk through this and sort of simulate the little video clip. You'll notice that this has already converted the color images into monochrome for me. Now you'll notice this green rectangle. Well, the green rectangle here, actually it's a square, is the 1024 by 1024 pixel aspect ratio that the project had been developed for, but the images that came in were 1920 by 1080. If I look at my image file, sure enough, uh, you'll see the 1920 by 1080, and the link for the project was built for 1024 by 1024. I could go ahead and run it, and it's going to run everything through this rectangular window, but I'd like to see the whole image, so I have another convenient thing I can do here. I can merge two pixels into one and compress my 1920 to 960. So now I have a 960 by 1080 aspect, which fits within the 1024 by 1024 confines. All right, fantastic. Uh, pretty much ready to go with my source. Now, what I would like to do would be to see the results of what happens. So I can take a probe, and I can bring a probe window down here. And this probe window, I'll go ahead and hook it right before the final end of sending all of this to the computer. And now, once I start my simulation, 
uh, all this processing is going to be done and the results are going to be able to be viewed in the simulation module. Okay, so let me go ahead and run my simulation. Here's another fantastic benefit of using visual applets. Uh, it does a design rule check for you. So this has no errors and no warnings. If I had received errors, I would have been uh, told what they were and I would know exactly where on my flowchart I need to go to resolve it. So this is a fantastic uh, debugging, real-time debugging tool uh, that can help you uh, develop your project prior to burning into the FPGA. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start my simulation. Since I've got 50 images, I'm going to have to run this 50 times. So I'm going to go ahead and start it. Now this typically is going to happen in real time within the FPGA of your smart camera or the FPGA of your frame grabber. Uh, but I'm running it through simulation on the computer and it's taking a few seconds to accomplish all of this. All right, so it's about done. It's finished. It's told me that it was a successful operation. And now I can double click on my simulation module. Let's go ahead and look at the whole image once again. And look at this. I can see some white objects against a black background. I'll go ahead and walk through my frames. And yes, what I'm seeing now is the entire background has been subtracted. The building is gone. The sky is gone. Uh, the slow moving clouds have gone. Everything has disappeared and is now black. And all that remains are the objects in motion. So this is a tremendous data reduction in those raw images. If I now needed to send this over to another computer or send this to some targeting device, if you will, some countermeasure type of uh, system, well then this is a, a very small amount of data. So this data would be processed in real time through the cameras with the FPGA and this small data set could now be sent to your countermeasure device. I mean, this is just a tremendous uh, reduction in data. This is also gonna save a lot of cost uh, because if we implemented this in the FPGA of the camera, within the camera, we may not have to have all of that high uh, bandwidth uh, cabling between the camera and the computer. We might be able to just do this with a simple little uh, gigabit Ethernet cable, or maybe it could even be done wirelessly. Okay, so I even had a small uh, video loop uh, basically just showing this, and as you can see, here are the buzzards that are flying around the building. Now, what, what you can take a note of is that it actually is capturing the buzzard and it's putting a highlight around them. Uh, you could possibly imagine that I could do a blob dilation right now in a center of mass calculation and be able to then get that coordinate uh, extracted and then I could have that uh, correlated with real-world coordinates and sent over to a countermeasure device. I mean, really uh, fantastic. Okay, so let's say that really uh, was great, but I wanted to get situational awareness. So this might not be the actual design that I needed. Well, I've got other designs available to me. I'm going to come back and I'm going to go to a different one, utilizing rolling average. I don't want to save this particular one. I've already uh, done what I needed to with it. And once again, I can take a look at this existing example. I could bring into this simulation source module the same identical images as I had done before. And I can probe any part of this to see what the results are of the image processing routines. I won't go ahead and do that. Uh, you got the idea from the prior example. Let me go ahead and show you what this looks like if we were now using the rolling average. So this is utilizing a rolling average. This gives us situational awareness. I still see the BB&T bank building, but now all the objects that are in motion are colorized. So once again, uh, further uh, software algorithms could go ahead and denote those as objects in motion and be able to calculate uh, the specific information that could be uh, then sent to a countermeasuring uh, device. Okay, so uh, this is a very fast example of the power of using visual applets. I'm extremely excited about the capability of doing this. I'd like to encourage uh, everybody 
uh, to uh, share uh, or to come with us uh, and explore all of the great things that can be done utilizing this, uh, please contact um, us at pyramidimaging.com at any time and uh, we'll be happy to get that um, you know, get that information over to you. So thanks so much and uh, hope to see you again someday soon.